Hello everyone and welcome to another analysis video. Before we start I want to remind you that this video is not a financial advice and it is for entertainment purposes only. Today we'll go over Alphabet Inc that is also known as Google because Google is the most known brand for this company. You are looking at the last annual report, the 10k report, the company have filed with the SEC for the fiscal year December 31st, 2021. If you wonder where did I get this report from, I got it from the SEC website. So if you go to the sec.gov website, click on company filings, and then put the ticker symbol. From there, you'll get to Alphabet Inc page where you can find all the different reports the company have filed with the SEC. And from this area, you can find the 10K and the 10Q reports, the annual and the quarterly reports. These are the most recent reports. And if you click here and change the date, you'll be able to view all the annual and quarterly reports the company have filed for the previous years and quarters. So on the first page, we can see that there are two securities registered with the SEC, class A and class C. And on the second page, we can see the outstanding shares for class A, it's about 300 million shares, class B about 44 million shares and class C about 350 million shares. But we didn't see class B in the register securities. In this paragraph, they're talking more about the class B and they're saying each share has 10 votes, while class A has one vote and class C has no votes. And as of the end of 2021, Larry Page and Sergey Brin have almost 86% of the class B stock and about 51% of the voting power. So that can tell you that they have significant influence over the company's decisions and long-term growth. Like for example, the dividend policy, hiring CEOs, or which direction for future growth. Larry Page and Sergey Brin are the co-founders of Google. And you can tell that after all these years, they don't want to let go the control of the company. An interesting quote by the founders, Google is not a conventional company. We do not intend to become one. If you think about Google's contribution to the internet and their services, you can tell that this statement is true. I think they are the first company who came up with Google Maps and there are other crazy services like Google Earth. They scanned the whole earth. That's, that's amazing. Unfortunately, their dividend policy states that they have never declared a dividend and they will never do. But the nice thing, they do repurchase their stocks. And in the last quarter, they're telling us they bought about 665,000 shares for class A and about 4 million shares for class C. That's just for the last quarter of 2021 alone. And we will go over the decrees of their outstanding shares later in the analysis. The report has an interesting graph for the stock price performance. And it assumes if you invested $100 on 2016 or the end of 2016, it will be about $340 at the end of 2021, which means it's about 240% return on investment and about 40% per year, which is a very good return on investment. One of the things that I like about the annual reports is the amount and type of information provided because it helps to build a better picture about the company and the direction for future growth. And in this part, they're telling us how do they make money? They see themselves as the world-class advertising technology for advertisers, agencies, etc. They have divided their revenue sources as Google services, Google clouds, and other bets. Google services includes performance advertising, which is the per click ad, brand advertising, which is a more focused ad to help users be more aware about service or product. They have Google Play, which is sales of apps and in-app purchases. They do have hardware sales, like for example, the Fitbit wearable devices, Google Nest home products and Pixel phones. And they have another revenue source that is non-advertising, like the YouTube premium and the YouTube TV subscription. And of course, we know that they are very big in the Google Cloud and all other sources of revenue that comes from trying to apply technology to bigger problems, they call it other bets. And in this section, you can see the biggest chunk comes from Google advertising, which is about 209 billion out of 257 billion for year 2021. Something I think you should check in every annual report, it's the report of independent public accounting firm, which the report of the auditor. Every publicly traded company have to go through an audit for their financial statements. 
And this highlighted paragraph is a standard paragraph when there is no issue in the financial statements and that's what we want to see in every annual report. And basically they are saying the financial statements are presented fairly in all material respect. Which means Google are doing a very good job in keeping track for all their revenues and expenses and assets and liabilities and we can trust those financial statements. A very important thing I want to mention in this annual report, which is for the first time, Google is having a 20-4-1 stock split, implemented early in 2022. And I'm bringing this up because I'm going to adjust prior year outstanding shares by multiplying them by 20, so we can compare prior year earning per share to this year's earning per share, and especially 2022 as well. Now let's jump to the intrinsic valuation. So I have gathered data from all three financial statements, income statement, balance sheet statement, and the statement of cash flow for the past years from 2015 to 2021 to look at the previous year's performance and to find out three key information that I call them forecasting keys to be able to forecast 2022 numbers and the return on investment. I also decided that the required return on investment is 5%. This is up to the individual investor and you can decide that your required return of investment can be 7% or you can make it 2%. Usually the more risky the company is the higher the return on investment and for Google we know it's going to last for another 10 or 20 years so 5% is more than reasonable at this case. I also decided that the discount rate should be the table interest rate. The reason for that because this analysis only focuses for one year and the maximum life for the table is 52 weeks, which is one year. If you wonder where did I get this number, 3.955, if you go to the treasurydirect.gov website, which is the official website to buy government debt securities, and click Treasury Marketable Securities, you'll find three different types of government debt securities, which they are the bill, notes, and bonds. The difference between the three is the interest rate and the life of each security. So the bill maximum life is 52 weeks, the notes maximum life is 10 years, and the bonds maximum life is 30 years. So if you click on the treasury bills, and then click on results of recent auctions, 20 most recent auctions, scroll down until you find the most recent 52 week, and here you go, it's 3.955. So the revenue have been growing every year. It's true that in 2020 did not grow as much as the years before, but I mean, it's still growing. And that's something very positive for any company that the revenue is continuing to growing. The cost of revenue and operating costs are stable. They are in the 40% and in the 70%. And actually, if you look at the prior few years, they are going down, which means that Google is managing their expenses much better than before. Times interest earn ratio is basically telling us how many times the interest expense the company is making in earnings. And we have 264 times, which tell us that the company can service their debt very easily so we don't have to worry about them. Changing outstanding shares is very interesting for the past three years because every year it's going down. That means they have a new policy from 2019 to buy back their shares. And on average, they are buying back 1.7% per year. Looking at the balance sheet, their debt almost non-existent, it's less than 1%, which might explain the high times interest and ratio because their debt almost nothing. Liabilities are stable and they are in the 30%, and 30% liabilities are more than acceptable for a company in this size. Working capital to revenue ratio, basically it's telling us how many dollars are generated from each working capital dollar. And in 2021, we have $2.19 generated from $1 of working capital. And as a reminder, the working capital is the difference between current assets and current liabilities and stands for the liquid that the company has to run their next year operations. This piece of information is important to forecast next year revenue. Looking at the cash flow statement analysis, the operating cash flow is more than net income in all the prior six years, which is something we really want to see. So over here, I have four forecasting scenarios, ranging from the worst case to the most optimistic, but I will go for the expected case. These four forecasting scenarios depend on three key information, the forecasted revenue, the forecasted outstanding shares, and the forecasted free cash flow. 
For the forecasted revenue, I will use working capital to revenue ratio, and it ranged from 1.6 to 2.4, but I will take the same as prior year working capital to revenue ratio for the expected case. Forecasted outstanding shares, I decided is going to be 1.7% less than 2021 outstanding shares because that's the average for the prior three years for the decrease of outstanding shares due to the policy of repurchasing their stocks. And for the forecasted free cash flow, I'm using the free cash flow to revenue ratio and I'm going to have it the same for all forecasting scenarios which is the average of the prior three years and that is 23% of the revenue. So here we have in the expected case 272 billion in revenue and 62 billion in free cash flow which give us $4.82 in free cash flow per share. Discounting that will give us $4.63 and if we decided that the required return on investment is 5% then the most you should pay for Google stock is $92.67. If you go back to the first page and change the required return on investment, then the most you should pay is $115.83 for the expected scenario. Looking at the Google stock price chart for the past month, it seems that it's ranging from $95.65 to $101.64. So in a sense, it's not very far from our analysis. And I believe the market is requiring 4.67% or 4.7% return on investment because if we change that to 4.6% we will have $100.72 for each Google share in the expected case. So one of the things that you need to decide what is your required return on investment because it plays a huge role in the intrinsic analysis. This is it for this video, thank you so much for watching it to the end, please consider supporting this channel by giving a like, comment, and let me know if there is a specific company in your mind that you want to see analysis for.